Hello and welcome back to The Doctor's Garage. My name is Marcus and in this video today I'm going to be telling you about fitting a rear view camera mirror to your Land Rover Defender. It's been inspired by the newer Defender that I've been driving recently that has that clear sight rear view mirror that you can flick to be in a camera and it helps you see stuff out the back and particularly in my Defender since I got the windows tinted in the rear at night time when cars are coming towards me I almost see them in the rear view coming towards me too and that's because I get reflection straight off the rear door window. So what I'm going to do is fit a live feed video camera out of the back of my Defender and I want a rear view camera that actually covers the whole mirror. So not one of these ones where you kind of get a square within the mirror, it's going to be a full video feed across the whole mirror itself. I've managed to find one on Amazon, it was a really good price, less than £100 including the camera and everything else with it and the rear view mirror. It really brings your Land Rover up to date and actually allows you to see a lot better out the back. So if you're interested in doing the same job I'm doing today, you can see all of the things that I've found and searched for over the internet in the description below. So you can click through and buy them straight here if you want to do the same job I've done. This is my stream media rear view mirror that I've got to fit in my Defender to go over the rear view and provide that live stream video of what's going on at the back. So it looks like this, looks like a normal mirror. It actually just elastic bands over your original mirror there, which is quite useful with these little bands in the bottom of the box. Now it's got a dash cam camera for the front view and the rear camera is on a, is on a line that you can put into the back of the car. So for me, I've got that taped up just here in the back of the back of the Defender. So I'm gonna drill that out through the back here and that's where it's gonna sit to give me a live view feed of what's going on at the back of my car when I'm driving. Let me show you what we're doing in my car now. We have sound deadened the roof and you'll see some wires. So I've done all the wiring here. I've coiled up a load of wire just there as you can see. And when the roof finally goes off, obviously all that will be hidden. And that's the plan for this. I'm gonna create a new circuit and create this uh, rear view live view mirror out the back. But this sounds much much better with this four mil um, silent coat on that I've got. I've got my headliners back in the car. Now I need to sort this camera out. So I'm gonna have to drill a hole through the back of the body, put a little rubber grommet in it so it doesn't leak and then put a camera probably just about there looking backwards. Uh, so the camera looks a little like this. It sits this way around, the bracket goes up. So it's gonna sit just on there and hopefully that'll give me a really good rear view picture. Just realized the worst thing. So I can't just take that wire out there. I'm not gonna push this massive thing through the car. So I'm gonna to have to take all this wire that I've tacked up, go through all that coil, get that front bit out, and then push that through the hole. Interesting as well, when I've taken this all apart, I've found, it's got a date there, 1st the 11th, 06, and that's actually when my car was in production. So they've ridden it on the body of the car for some reason. Just found a better solution. I've actually got this connection just here, which is only about a meter off the end of the wire. So that is what, when this is pulled out, so that is what I need to feature the hole, which all makes sense now, rather than winding that all back. So just that long on there. So I've drilled that hole now straight to there. It is just under that pillar, under where the rear washer fluid comes out. And this is the piece that needs to go through. So hopefully that'll be just the right size to get it through. Fantastic. And then I can pull the camera straight through that. So that should put a tiny little rubber grommet, I think it's called, just in there, just to stop the wire from getting frayed and just make it a bit better. And I'll also put some kind of seal in there once I've set it all and got it sorted, but that's looking really good. So I'm planning on the little camera just sitting there, just above the uh, rear washer. And I think that'll give quite a good view. Cause you want to close the door that's sitting just the rear way is about here. So actually that's quite a nice distance there to the camera. So that is all wired up now. I've just stuck it on there for now because I don't want to drill into the body anymore. And I want to make sure that's the right sort of height and level and stuff when I get it plugged in. So that looks really good. Next step, I guess, is start putting the headliner back in and seeing how that goes. I'm really happy with the new sound deadening. It sounds so much better in here. So we're going to put this new LaSalle wrapped headliner that we did inside uh, on the car. If anyone's wondering where those little rubber grommets came from, I've got this little set here. Again, I bought off Amazon. It was super cheap, like six pound, got loads of size in there and they actually work really well. Again, link in the description below if you want to buy any of this random stuff I managed to find online. So I have done all the wiring, I think, for the rear view camera. As you can see, the USB cable goes right round and I've stuck it to the dash. Gonna work out how to put the electrics into that. So looking at electronics in here, what I'm thinking of doing is instead of putting my power for my rear view on the battery directly, which means it will drain, if I forget to turn it off, I'm actually thinking of wiring it into the cigarette lighter because this only comes live when the ignition is turned. So I've taken out the bottom screw out of the dash, pulled out the two plugs there that connect uh, to the back of the cigarette lighter and I've just tested them and they come live when the ignition is working. So that's where I think I'm gonna plug my camera to and then run the wires along, FAR, 
up through the pillar and that should be good. I had a bit of trouble fixing that rear view camera in with the power supply that I needed to get, but I've finally done it and it is working, the power works. So basically I bought this kit off Amazon. It's about seven pound and it allows you to be able to hardwire a USB 12 volt into your car. So what I've done is it goes into the fuse box. I've actually put it into the radio fuse. I didn't want to put it onto the battery because I didn't want it to drain power all the time. It's got a little fuse in the power supply and then it's also got a little transformer here. I think that's what it is, which basically stops the, uh, well, puts out a right output for the, the camera. Then it goes up, there's one which is onto uh, earth and then it goes into a USB cable or a micro USB as it is in this case to there. I'm taking the dash off as you can see. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I'm trying to run the cable down here through the back of the stereo and then into the fuse box, but I really can't see a way to do that. So I've actually decided, I've just looked, I could actually run it all the way down here and under in the footwells under the carpeting, and that just seems way easier. I don't know why I didn't do that before. Anyway, I've learned how to take a dash off my TD5. There are those three screws, it literally lifts out, and there's a few more on top of the radio, and then you can get that out. There's three more on top of there. But I'm gonna put this all back together again and go down through the carpet method into there. I managed to feed the wire right down this side bit. This is the side where I've still got that problem. I have put loads of lanagon guard on there, but you can see it's quite corroded in there at that bulkhead thing. I need to definitely do that sandwich seal in between there next time I'm doing stuff to the carpet, working the way wire right under here, and then under all the carpeting I've put on previously. So the camera is all fitted now. You may have seen my rear headliner being put in on the previous video. If you haven't already, check that out. I wrapped the whole headliner in my Defender and I'm really pleased with the job that's turned out. So this is my camera now. So you can see two little wires coming down from the back there. One goes to the rear camera and one is that USB live wire that's running there too. And this is what the camera looks like and it's actually connected to my old rear view. And the great thing with it is, is actually it works like a normal mirror. You can see my phone in there that I'm recording on and I can see out the back of the car with it like a normal mirror. But it has a button on the bottom that actually switches it on and off. So it's plugged into the radio circuit. It means that when I turn the car on, so ignition fires up, the camera comes on and then it jumps straight to it says please insert SD card because I need to do an SD card for it first so you can see out the rear there it's a bit of reflection from the sun in the front but essentially you can see that I can turn the brightness up and brightness down and you can also scroll up and down so you can see when you're reversing or if you go normally what that looks like you also have on here the time the date everything else on the screen too and you can actually swipe between the front camera so looking straight out the front with the camera on that side and swipe again, you get a split screen, which is quite cool. I hope that video has been interesting and maybe inspired you to do the same to your Land Rover Defender. For those that follow me here regularly on the channel know this is definitely not my full-time job. I'm a cosmetic doctor by background. It's what I do day to day, but I do love messing about with my Land Rover Defender too. So I do a lot of DIY jobs here on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, go check out my other videos here on the channel and subscribe, like this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.